Hello, and welcome to episode 118 of Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Paul McGillian is going to be joining us for this episode, Dr. Carson Beckett from Stargate Atlantis. He was one of our first guests in uh, season one and also for episode 100 with the Atlantis cast reunion. And we'll be talking to him about uh, uh, rejoining his uh, co-stars for that particular episode. But before we get started, if you like Stargate, and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, it would mean a great deal to me if you click that like button. It really makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will definitely help the show grow its audience. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, do click that subscribe icon. Giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new video drops, and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes and clips from this live stream will be released over the next uh, several weeks on the GateWorld.net YouTube channel. For this particular episode, this is a pre-recorded show. So if you are joining us in the YouTube.com slash DialTheGate uh, live chat that's going on right now when this episode has been published, just please know that this episode was recorded Tuesday, the 8th of February. So we have collected questions for Paul McGillian in uh, the comments section that I prepared for the Q&A for today. So there will not be a chance uh, for you to ask the questions live because we're a pre-recorded show. But we'll always, uh, Paul is a huge supporter of the channel and we will have him back in the future uh, to get some, some live questions. So the questions that are asked in this episode come from me and from fans who submitted those questions previously. I really appreciate those who, uh, who submitted questions a uh, number of the questions i did not ask because they are answered in the first episode with paul if you want to have uh answers to those uh questions or you didn't see your question get asked in this episode check out the first time that he joined us because it is very likely uh, that that question was answered already in uh, his first appearance with us now without further ado Paul McGillian, Dr. Carson Beckett on Stargate Atlantis returns, gracing us with your presence. Thank you so much, sir, for being back with us. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much. Hello, you cheeky buggers. <laughs> How's it been going? What's been going on? It's great. You In know, it's uh, world. You know, yes. You know, two years of a pandemic, but right. I, I think it seemed like they're starting to open up again, and uh, life is returning to normal. The kids are at school, which is great, and. Uh, yeah, things to be seem to be getting a bit better, which is good, and I hope everybody's keeping well. Have you been keeping busy? It's been busy, busy times. Yeah, I'm working on season two of Firefly Lane right now, which has been uh, a ton of fun. So uh, I don't know when it's going to air. People are asking about it, so hopefully um, we'll find that out soon. Um, but yeah, it's been a ton of fun. Yeah. Can you give us a brief rundown of Bud for those who haven't seen that project? Bud, <laughs> Bud Malarkey. Um, <laughs> It's, it's the best. It's the best name. Um, so lovely Sarah Chalk. I play her dad in the show. I'm Bud Malarkey. She's Kate Malarkey. Um, and Catherine Heigl and her are best friends in the series. And it's, it basically goes, it travels through the lives of these two girls based on a book by, called Firefly Lane. Um, Kristen Lee Min wrote the book. Um, wonderful story, heartbreaking and um just uh, it's got so much humanity in it so it's it's just a, a real pleasure to be part of a series like that and it kind of covered it spans over 30 years so myself and the lovely Ch chela horsdell plays my wife wow. uh margie margie and bud so i'm kind of like a blue collar sort of dad you know um when he was in the 70s he worked for a, a factory that built the, the, the space rover and things like that wow kind of rednecky you know sort of um yeah, it's 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 good. It's it, it's a it's a fun series. Um, he's a beer drinking, hot dog eating, <laughs> porch loving, dude. <laughs> so, so, does this uh, does the series transcend time every episode, or is it like yeah. wow? Yeah, every episode we go into different time areas. Usually, it's it, it goes. Sometimes it'll be in the seventies, depending on the episode. It might be stay in certain periods longer, but it usually goes to the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, and two thousand and five. Sort of it ends. So. For myself and Chela, uh, we we age throughout the series. Um, for uh, Tully and Kate, and Catherine Heigl and Sarah Chalk, they have younger versions of them, two young actresses that are fantastic. And so in the 70s, I work with them. And then I later on, I work with the with the other the other ladies. So you get the best of both worlds. Does it's fun. every, um, does, it, it, 
it is the the time frames isolated per episode or does it switch back and forth per episode? Is switches it... back and forth internally in the episodes. Oh, sort okay. Of... So you you know, new episodes may come out. You could you don't know what kind of makeup you'll be putting on if new ones. Oh, come there's out. oftentimes where they have to age us and then they have, oftentimes where they have to get rid of the gray and make me younger, you know what I mean? And wow. and do that work. So so it's back and forth and sometimes even inside that episode there'll be different time spans. So it just depends what what uh what episode it is and how much time you're spending on those. As a creative person, as an artist, what tools do you use to hang on to, to keep all of the content straight? Because for you playing this character, he has an internal continuity that is fixed in the time of when you're coming in. So he's exposed to certain, he knows certain events before the event that you're recording that day. And he isn't aware of certain things that come after that, that you've done yeah. in previous episodes, I would imagine. Sure. Um, yeah. How do you, do you just, do you just go day by day dealing with that? How do you I internalize think, that? For me anyway, yeah, I go day by day de dealing with it. You know, um, he's a very lovable character. The, the complexity of the scenes, although there is some really, really beautiful tender moments with his daughter and at times it's really sweet, uh, but uh, like I said, a lot of times you'll catch him on a couch watching football and stuff like that. So, and he's going to parties. He's sort of there reluctantly oftentimes. So he's, he's sort of a curmudgeon a little bit. But for me, I just go episode by episode, scene by scene, and, and just go through with it, you know. Um, they do such a fine job um, uh, with the set deck and everything. They put you into that period. Although, you know, that being said, when I am playing older bud, you know, I'm in my late 70s, uh, I, I slunch a little bit more and kind of just, you know, <laughs> you know throw, slow things down a little bit more. And I think Chilla does the same thing. And there's scenes where we're dancing and stuff. And it's always fun to kind of play that. You know, you're not as spry as you were when in the 70s, you know. So there's aspects like, uh, like that. So are there um, emotionally and perhaps from a what's what's the, the word I want from a a, a wise perspective how, how wise he is do you do you approach him differently decade over decade there or is he kind of like a static kind of archie bunker almost fixed in in his ways kind of character or when you look at oh we're gonna be doing him from the 90s or we're gonna be doing him into the 2000s i want to play him a little bit more rounded and mature you know sure how sure, has that evolved seen, his his edge goes away as he gets older too okay. and he does it he does involve because he's got some you know if any people have seen the show there's um, there's some uh, aspects of it, I won't give it any yeah. way um, that, you know, he has to mature to as well and, and, and deal with. And I think uh, you can see him evolve as a person throughout, throughout the series as he gets older. And it, it, it's interesting because it goes back and forth so yeah. much that you, you kind of have a, uh, at times you're kind of like, Oh God, I like that character. And then you don't see him for a long time and then he comes back and then he's in like, you know, in 2005 version of it. So it is, gets a little bit complicated. Um, but for an actor, you know, I just go in and present, you know, we have an awesome writing team. So whatever opportunities I get to, to work, I just kind of take them at the moment and, and play them like that. But knowing that he does mature as a person, for sure. Hopefully we all do, you know. Do you know if Netflix has announced uh, the release date for season two? They haven't announced it yet. Okay. As far as I know, you know. When did you finish shooting? I'm still shooting. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shooting, right. I'm shooting this week. Well, no, just good so, for yeah. you. We'll, we'll go to uh, April. Wow. Okay. And yeah. so the season one is available on Netflix right now. I am trying yeah. to see here how many episodes yeah. were in season one. Ten. Uh, ten episodes. Yeah, I'm like six of them, I think. I love this shorter uh, length series run. Uh, as opposed to like the the twenty episodes, frankly, of of shows like SG One and Atlantis, I think that uh, the the quality of the material is has overall had a real chance to improve over the years from doing a ten up a twenty twenty five episode series to a ten or an eight episode series because the writers seem to have an opportunity to spend more time on less hours of television and make them stronger. Would you agree with that? Or do you think it's more arbitrary? I, I, I think so. You know, I think, you know, you, you can really focus more. If you have 10, you have a, a writing team and everyone's got, you know, hopefully an episode or so they really focus on and, and the budgets can be well used, I think, cause you know, you're, you're dealing with 10 and not 20 and especially with a show like Stargate, you know, it's expensive to produce. And I think, right. um, 
the, you know, certain episodes, certain things you'd like to be able to do, you just sometimes don't have the budget for. And then knowing that you have 10 episodes, they can really allocate that budget to what, what, what needs they have, you know, in the show. Um, and the, the show on the Firefly Lane, it's more about um, dealing with all the, the the period, the time periods and the costumes and the set deck and everything like it changes, shifts like that. Whereas, you know, a show like Stargate, you're going off planet and you're dealing with all kinds of special effects. And and depending where you are, the, you know, the, the budget on the planet could be extraordinary. You know, the sets could be a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of like it as well, too. I mean, it, the British model is like sometimes six episodes, you know. They right. Do, limited, yes. really limited release series. Yeah. Hey, for an actor, though, it's nice to do 20 episodes. So, oh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> I can't that, understand yeah. that. <laughs> that too. For sure. Keep you busy. Uh, yeah. Any other uh, uh, recent projects or upcoming projects that you want to call out? Yeah, well, you know, I was, I worked, I had the pleasure of working on Jewel State's new series called Family Law. Uh, yes. And that, uh, the first season just aired. I'm in season two. Uh, and hopefully in season three, if they get a pickup, which they'll probably find out about sh- soon. And it's a, uh, it's a procedural drama. Jewel is the number one at it with Victor Garber, and, he, um, and they're they're fantastic. It's got a great cast. It's it's a ton of fun. I don't think it's airing in the states. It's just in Canada right now. Um, I think that that's but, correct. Yeah, and I think you know hopefully it will get a broader audience base soon. But it's a lot of fun to work on, and I have a really funny character, very complete opposite than Bud Malarkey. He's his name is Charles Chip Crombie, and I'm the kind of this sort of hotshot, sort of obnoxious lawyer. So, <laughs> but but he's. Um, he, he's a bit of a character, fun, really fun to play. So um, I wanted to, you know, Jill and I talked about trying to get on the show and, and do something, but I want to wait until I got a really fun part. And this is the part that I kind of wanted. So it, it's really, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on it. And, you know, Susan Nielsen's the showrunner and she's great in all the writings. It's fantastic. It's a ton of fun. That's solid. That's great. What mm-hmm. is it uh, like getting back with some of those uh, uh special members of the Atlantis cast. I know you and Jewel have always been tight, um, yeah. but getting to um, getting to share convention space is one thing, you know, but really getting back in there, sinking your teeth into, into uh, characters yeah. on, on a different set. Have you it's had, fun. have you had a lot of scenes with her? Uh, yeah, I've had quite a few scenes okay. with her. Um, in the, yeah, we have quite a few scenes, the big courtroom scene that we have. And uh, in the second, more so in the first episode than the second one, not as much with her, a lot with Victor. Sort of like Victor's nemesis, sort of in it. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. You know, uh, Jewel. You know, and I've said this before. She she really is taking uh, her roles in number one on the show really seriously, and she's doing a great job. And she's so gracious to everybody that comes onto set, and and she gets it. You know, uh, for some special friends, they got a bottle of Moe that she put. In ah, the ah, ah. But I think she's doing cards and stuff for a lot of people that are coming on and. And making sure she introduces herself and making people feel comfortable, which is, I think, a great thing to do. And um, it really helps the the flow of the show. And and why not make people feel comfortable when they come onto a set with you, you know? And, I, and she's doing such a great job. I'm really proud of her, you know? Well, she's learned from the best. Well, you know, it's a great way to watch. You know, it, it's great to watch her work. And she's so good. Um, she has a ton of dialogue and she just hammers it out. She looks amazing, um, you know, and she is just such a... Uh, you know, she's just taking the role on and, and, and just crushing it. I think she's fantastic. So uh, I think people, if you haven't seen it, you're in for a treat. She's really, really good. And, and it's funny, but at the same time, it's um, she's really vulnerable as well. And uh, it, it sparks a lot of, you know, pulls on the heartstrings quite a bit too. She's got a very interesting, complex character to play. It's one of these situations where it's like, you know, I wish that they would, uh, get some kind of a deal for distribution in the United States because you don't want to be one of these people who has to go and um, pirate it. But yeah. at a certain point, it's like, I love this actor. I love the performance that they give. You know, I want to have access to this content. Yeah. My region has decided not to carry it. At a, at a certain point, you know, what do you do? So yeah. I'm not going to say that anyone should do one thing or another, but I also think that you should be able to um, uh, support uh, the people whom you follow. So I, by I, keeping I, up with I, their stuff. Yeah, knock on wood, but I thought hopefully it'll get it'll get a wider fan base soon. I hope so. It deserves it deserves to have it. Absolutely, it was terrific sitting down with uh, you and the rest of the cast for Comic Con. Uh, yeah, online this past uh, July, and I was really surprised at how quickly everyone just kind of sank back into um, 
and made fun of each other. <laughs> yeah, the 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 comfort level just yeah. came right back there, and the quirky. I mean, even Rachel was like, "Oh, shut up, Paul." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the yeah, cadence yeah. between that's not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> the cadence no. between um, the personalities was just all in place, and it looked like you know it hadn't gone anywhere. No, I think we all uh, listen. Whenever I get a chance to see any of those guys, it's always uh, it's always uh, fun. We all have a dinner together. You know, we were in Germany um, mm. in November, I believe, and it was. Uh, Rachel and Tori and David Nickel and myself and you know we went for a couple of dinners we had just a great time it's just great catching up just as people they're just really good people you know and Jewel of course was there as well so it was like five of us so it was a ton of fun so and we really got a, a great chance to catch up and see each other and just like I don't know just like riding a horse again you know you just get Absolutely. back up ride a bike I mean it, it just everybody you we spent so much time with and they've moved on in different directions and doing different shows or whatever. But, you know, we all have the commonality of Stargate, you know, to that brought us together in the first place. And I think we all very much still appreciate that. Do you notice in Europe a, uh, a, a greater recognition for a lot of the sci-fi content than in is often the case over in, you know, America and, and Canada? I don't know. You know, it's been a while, obviously, since I've, you know, I've always had a great time going to conventions and seeing the fan base everywhere. Uh, you know, I haven't done it in the States, you know, obviously for obvious reasons recently, but um, they're just different. I think it's just different. You know, um, everyone has their things that they really like. I mean, the UK is a bit different than Germany and then mm. France and then, you know, Australia. And but uh, I, I can tell you something right now, the uh, the need and the, the appreciation for Stargate hasn't went away. You know, it's still there, and, and the fan base is certainly there. You know, we we had we we're signing for hours every day, and people were just thrilled that we we made the trip over. It was just fun to go over there and see everybody, and and see all these people celebrating what they you know they enjoyed together. Uh, James Davis wanted to know. Um, I, I sent a, a request out on on YouTube okay. for for some for some questions. Paul, uh, what does Atlantis mean to you as that? time in your life as as a person and as as a performer growing okay well james it's uh it was a very special time for me you know to be really honest with you it was uh the first big series i i was a, a major part of uh i got to play a scottish character which i hadn't done before <laughs> I, I i made sure that you know when I read for the character, I, I stuck to my guns and played them Scottish. So that was sort of uh, monumental to me in that sense, you know, that I was able to do that and represent my roots, so to speak. Thank you very much. And uh, and just getting to the camaraderie with everybody, you know, getting getting to, to know the writers and the directors and, of course, all the cast and, and meeting the fans, you know. Without that show, we wouldn't be talking, you know. This and, is true. And it, you know, and, and it's, the, it's the show that keeps on giving and it's something I always will appreciate and I will also like, cherish as as a big part of um, of my growing as an actor, you know. And and I had such a fun character to play. So I, as, as an actor, allowed me to you know lots of comedic uh, opportunities and lots of dramatic ones as well. Um, so it really you know you build your muscles and you really got in there and got into the trenches, so to speak. And and it really was something that I'll never forget. And and just uh, like I said, all the relationships, you know, people like yourself, David, mm. and, and all over the world that I've met, all these great people that um, share the common love for, for Stargate. So it's it, it'll always hold a special place for me. Uh, Rick Gisama wanted to know, uh, do you remember your visit to Ghent, G-H-E-N-T? He still has yeah. the picture from the face-to-face -face meeting, he says. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ghent was... What I do remember is one of the most beautiful towns or cities I've ever been in my life. It was absolutely stunning. And the people at the convention were amazing. They took such great care of us. And uh, yeah, we had we had a great time there. Uh, this is I, Belgium, I think. Yeah, it's Belgium. It's Belgium, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, again, I think Jules was at that one and Marina. Okay. And I think Cliff Simon was there as well. God, God rest his soul, you know. Yes, indeed. And we, uh, we went up to a Spanish tapas bar one night and it was amazing. So, you know, that was great. The convention was beautiful. The city's pristine. So, of course, I remember it very well. These, and it was a pleasure. These towns are like 900 years old. <laughs> I, mean, it's I know. Like, I'm like, this is, you know, I'm like, this place is like, it's a postcard. You know, I'm like, this right. is amazing. And 
how did you know and, and the guys that set it up were awesome and and they they got it done and 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 it was really well organized and all these people came from all over Europe to come to this convention in Ghent and I was like wow this is it was a really really beautiful special spot please bring me back <laughs> we haven't had a chance I don't believe to um to talk about uh, Cliff Simon since his passing yeah. if I'm not mistaken uh, you and Cliff got to know each other at conventions if I'm yeah. If I'm yeah. correct, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, who this this man was as a human being and as a performer uh, to to you. You know, he um, it's it just sad speaking about, you know, he he's such a first of all, he was just a specimen of a dude, you know, what yeah. I mean? and just uh, amazing shape. It took really great care of himself and uh, and just a really kind soul. But he never suffered fools, you know, at, at all. I remember one time. <laughs> One of the first I knew him a little bit. We met at conventions because we never worked on the same show per se. But I will see him and also have a great time with him. We also end up having dinners together, and all of us would go out and you know gravitate towards Cliff. And we had a, a similar sense of humor, and he liked to have fun. and And I remember we got on a plane, and we're flying to the UK, and I sit down beside Cliff on the plane, and there's this guy two seats over with his girlfriend, and he's quite loud and obnoxious and he's on his phone and we're getting ready to take off and they've already told um everyone to put their phones away mm -hmm. you know so we've all done that we're starting a taxi and this guy's still going on and cliff and i are just chatting like this you know and it's having a little conversation he's sitting right here and i'm here and the guy's over here yeah. to the side right two do two down from cliff you know and he <laughs> he goes yeah excuse me for a moment paul yeah hey hey Put that effing phone down right now, mate. You know, just like, you know, all right, you got it. You're obnoxious. I just told him right off, you know, put the phone. The guy's just like, put scurried away, put the phone down, you know. And, and then he goes, sorry, Paul, what we say? And I was just wow. like, oh. That guy never, never, I don't think he got up for the, for the eight hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff wasn't going to have it. Nope. Cliff wasn't going to have it. And it didn't face him at all. He had no problem saying it, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, and the, you know it's it's interesting because you you spend uh, so much time with somebody like that, you get to know him, and you get to see the soft side of him as well. And he just uh, like to laugh his butt off, you know, and, and have have a great time. And I remember I was going through, uh, and there's a t obviously a toughness about him, you know. He has such of a course story. There's something about him that's really, you know. And I remember I was looking at these. Uh, some an agent sent me uh, an audition for something. It was in a show called The Americans, and there was this role, and I'm like, it was. Uh, this basically an assassin kind of Israeli assassin type dude. And I'm like, this is Cliff. So I text Cliff. I go, there's this thing. I think I send the, I go, got it. And he's like, Oh, thanks. But he ended up getting the part. Oh, and you're did, kidding. And he did like four episodes of it or something, I believe. And you know, I think you just share stuff like that with people. When you see something, I'm like, this is you, man. I don't this is you. This is you. You should be. And sure enough, he got it, which is amazing. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, last, I think I saw him one time and he bought me a pint afterwards. He said, thank you so much for throwing it my way. I'm like, you probably would have gotten it anyway, but it's just when you see something like that, and I'm like, Cliff, this is Cliff Simon right there, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, just about his passing, and it was just so tragic um, and shocking, to be honest, because you never expect when you say goodbye to somebody at one of these events that you're never going to see you see them again, you know? And, and he made such an impact on the fandom i believe because he was so great i spent many times on stage with him and he was really great and generous with his time and and truly cared about the people and and having the opportunity to travel he never took it for granted and um he always put uh himself out there and and gave him a little piece of cliff every time he was out there so um yeah it's just a really sad passing and uh it really affected me i really uh i missed the guy so Yes, it reminds us to you know take every day uh, for what it is. As it, for for us, it may be our last, and for the people that we see, you know, don't if you can, don't leave something on a sour note. That's right, because you never know if that's going to be it. Yeah, that's very true. It's very true. You know, don't hold a grudge. You know, just don't. Just step up, be the bigger person. I think you know, in in, in cases like this, not that. Um, I don't know. Who he, I don't know if he had any grudge with anybody, but everyone I know loved Cliff. Cliff but I'm just saying, in general, you know, it just takes a little bit of time to be kind to somebody and just kind of remember that everyone's going through tough times right now. You know. Agreed. Everyone that's been happening lately, the pandemic and whatnot. So. Yep. Make good ripples. Send good ripples out there. I agree. 
KND, uh, Paul, any memories uh, from your first appearance as Ernest on SG-1? I-, I love this role, you know? Even if you were in the episode for all of seven or eight minutes, it's it's a solid performance from a... from a, uh, a, a, a it, It's a great episode. A young actor at the time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I do remember it, you know? It was really... It was really uh, a cool experience uh, you know again you're reading for you know it's it's a period piece and i remember when you know i just i felt like i had a good audition i got the part which was really nice and then when i was getting fitted for that they had to go i had to go to a special place and a tailor made me that special suit that i was wearing you know yes the, you know and then i also have to go see a different person who made the deep sea diving suit which was really cool you know to get to wear that thing it was heavy as heck and then <laughs> not really knowing the the fandom at that point in time uh, I always reference it, you know, I remember Martin Wood, um, he directed second unit on that. Yes. Uh, on that episode. And I worked with him and then I never did another episode of Stargate SG one. And right. I had lots of friends. I think that did lots of them played lots of multiple different characters. I'm like, Oh, what the heck? I know. I thought I did a good job. You know, it's, I can't get on there. And then when I saw Martin, when I, when I got, um, Atlantis and Martin was doing the pilot, I kind of had a chance to chat with him and I just said, Hey, I, how come I never came back and did, um, you know, SG-1 again? He goes, well, you played Ernest Littlefield. You played the first person to go through the Stargate. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, have you done a convention yet? I'm like, no. And he goes, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You'll see. And so- You are well-remembered. Was, yeah. He said it was well-remembered. And I didn't, uh, and now after having been there, I realized he said we couldn't use you again because that was a different, in that show, that was a really important character. And, and, and for the, you know, uh, for the fan base that follows it so it was it was a cool thing to play and i you know i love how it was period as well very different than a lot of the show so um and people remember sometimes that it's me or people are people are quite shocked later on because it was early in sg1 and then i came in later as land very obviously i'm doing a scottish accent and completely different and older so yeah it was it was cool to do yeah Good i question. i've had uh this conversation with tom Macbeth before who played yep. Mayborn in in SG1 and he had wanted to do Atlantis so bad and he went in there to audition for it and they said you're too recognizable um yeah. it's not happening and he's like seriously like yeah you know and it's one of those things where it's like that's an arbitrary decision like where can you suspend an audience member's disbelief garwin sanford was one of the more recognizable faces on sg1 and he was in the pilot uh, of atlantis as well and everyone's like nareem's on earth yeah well deal with it you know and it's just like where is the line drawn and it's just one of those creative decisions where the people at the top say okay this is believable but this is not yeah. And it, as a performer, it's like, I could, you know, I, I could, I could, if, I could eat this week. I would really appreciate the work. But yeah. at, a, at a certain point, if, if you're too prominent by some person's standards, it's too much. Yeah. I mean, it's up to the the writers and, and the producer of the show to decide where, you know, that character might fit or not. Tom McBeth's a fabulous actor, which mm. I'm so glad. And a great guy too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, any show with Tom's in it, it's a better show. But uh, I think... But um, but I also understand, you know, they, they can't just start pulling characters uh, out of shows and putting them into, you know, it's almost like jumping the shark a little bit. It's like, oh, come on, that's, you know, so there's that aspect as well, I, I, I can see. And I think a lot of shows do that, you know, I, I'll read for things quite often and say, well, you know, do not submit if you've already appeared in the show in the past seven seasons. So oh, they'll sometimes say that quite often. OK. And yeah. Vancouver was also a much smaller town 20 years ago as well. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's it's at least doubled, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's doubled, and I mean, there's so many productions out here that have doubled, and and you know, you think about you know, the X Files was a show that really kind of established it on the map a little bit, and then you got long running shows like the Stargate trilogy, mm-hmm. and then Supernatural, of course, and all and, and Outer Limits, and all these sci fi's. I mean, Slider, all, all like so many sci fi's too, and then obviously other productions too. So. Um, when things are going with all the gears, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for actors here to work on these shows, and it's and it's been a, it's been a great place for for actors to kind of get their chops and get in there and work on some cool shows. Urias Tosh, uh, have many fans told you that they thought you were a uh, uh, Scottish-born actor? That you're, I mean, obviously you have Scottish heritage, but didn't realize that you were Scottish Canadian because the performance well, was, was so convincing. Yeah, well, I was born in Scotland. Okay, so you are, okay, technically, but you were raised in Canada, right? 
I was. I came over when I was quite young. Okay. Um, I was like two and a half, three years old. But okay. then when I then when I was twelve, we moved back to Scotland until I was fifteen. So it's really just semantics. <laughs> but yeah, I've heard that a bit, you know, and uh, depending on who it is, I mean, sometimes it's so funny. Some people in Scotland are like, I don't, I don't. I can't hear your accent. You don't have an accent. I'm like, well, <laughs> for the point, <laughs> I have an accent. no problem. You know, but everyone has a different type of Scottish accent they're used to he hearing. You know, it's, it's like anything. So obviously for uh, the North American audience, you have to temper it a little bit to make sure it's understandable. At times it can be a bit thick, you know, so you have to kind of temper it a little bit for the audience. But uh, I've had that several times. Yeah. When I've spoken to people and they're kind of like, whoa, where are you from? Right. right exactly. <laughs> I am an actor. <laughs> this is what I do. I am a chameleon. Um, the the way in which Beckett was brought back into the series, you and I have had this discussion in the past. The 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 going out with a bang was so good. It was uh, one of those turning points in the show where we all, as fans, just bled for the character, wept. Uh, I I certainly I certainly teared up in watching that performance. Um, to be brought back as uh, as a clone, there are, in sci-fi there are only so many ways that you can be introduced: alternate yeah. dimension, time travel, this this or that. Uh, Zuby Force wanted to know um, what did you think of the way that you were reinserted into the series, and do you think it could have been served better by doing it a different way? Oh, interesting. Uh, I thought it was uh, ingenious, actually. You know, Joe, Joe Malazzi um, talked to me about it. I'm like, well, how how are we going to bring me back? You know, when I got the initial call, the, we'd love to have you back. You know, and I was like, oh, that was great. And honestly, didn't expect that. Um, it was it was very nice to come back to on the on the show. And obviously, you know, at the end, you know, Beckett flies Atlantis back to you know the San Francisco mm -hmm. Bay. So, I mean, uh, for me as an actor, it was kind of. Um, and I think I, I think it was a nice homage to the fans because the fan base really went kind of berserk when he got killed. So it was really a pleasure, you know, to come back on the show, and you know, using the whole Michael through line mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 inserting that in there, and he became. I, I thought oh, that's really smart. And he's like, yeah, because sci-fi anything can happen. I thought it was a pretty clever way to do it. You know, I I really do. I never really because it really kind of made sense to me after he told me how he's going to do it. Um, that I thought, okay, that, that makes sense. So I never really thought of any other ways, um, obviously, because it's an exploding tumor, so it'd have to be something like that, you know? um, some DNA or something. You know? But but how my concern was when I came back is how was I going to play the character? And essentially, he's like, just play him exactly the same. Obviously, the first episode back, he's a bit, you know, everyone's kind of treating him odd. So that's a bit of an odd thing. It's just going to unfold how it unfolds. But as we went on through the episodes, he just became Beckett again, mm -hmm. in my, in my estimation and how I played him, you know, and uh, there was that remnants of what had happened, but it just gave more layers to the character. I, I felt. I recently watched whispers and I could have swore that it was part of the dialogue, but I guess it was just inferred. Um, the the metaphysics of what happens to the character is always very interesting to me and to a lot of fans because we like to dissect the minutiae of it. Just just how much of Beckett is Beckett? If if a soul exists, is that still there, a part of him, or is it just is it something else? And the scene where the creature comes down above you and yeah. checks you out, you know, and leaves. Uh -huh. I remember watching that being like, oh, it's it's sensing that this is a similar creation, that this is another of Michael's creations and is leaving him alone for that reason. Did you get that vibe when in, in shooting that and in reading that content? Or do you think that it was just a coincidence and you were just, I, I, I don't know. But all, was I quiet. Know, all I know is I was frozen right? <laughs> when they had it, just things so horrifying. Um, I'm just going to stay exactly still and don't move at all and don't breathe. And uh, <laughs> I did go into that detail, what you you know, which is yeah, it could be it could be something else. Obviously, that's what makes sci-fi sci-fi, right? But uh, as an actor, I was like, okay, that's a scary. I'm scaring the bloody hell out of me. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible creature. <laughs> we had Nicole DeBoer on a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. she she loved working with you. No, she's great. Yeah, she's great. It was a pleasure. She's so fun. I wish we had more of her in the show. It would be great. You know, had there been a season six. Uh, and it's one of the things I'm going to ask Joseph Malazzi about when we hit season five. We've been talking uh, season by season over the past uh, year, almost year and a half. Uh, 
that that was had to have been almost a certainty that uh, that team would have been back for season six because it was yeah. it was such a great direction. It was a fun fun episode too, you know. And you never know, hey, maybe Beckett would have gotten a little love interest for a change rather than David. Yeah, Hewitt. yeah, <laughs> you, you know? know, nothing against Dave, but you know, no. let's, let's diversify a little. No, let's mix it up a bit. But <laughs> no, all the girls on the show, all, all, they all came in, and and it was a, it was a really cool, fun episode, you know. And it was like a lot of Beckett and and Shepard and and these women, you know, in the episode. It was pretty cool and and frightening too, you know, quite a scary episode, right? Atlanta Stargate did horror about once every year or two, and it's one of those where it's like, okay, if you're gonna go there as an audience member, if you're gonna go there, you really need to make this genre work. And that's one of those where I had a, a couple of genuine jumps that didn't feel cheap. Good, it good. felt like a solid performance or a, like a solid presentation. Yeah, no, I think so too. Yeah. Anima Confusa, uh, my question for Paul, were there any, when, if and when you ever had a, a difficult day on Atlantis, uh, what would bring it about? Would it be, would it be dialogue? Would it be, you know, working out in the rain um what what were the most trying days on that set uh well the dialogue was you know we listen dave in our show you know in atlantis it was david had a ton of dialogue mm. i would have a ton of dialogue and um you know nickel would have uh, like heavy dialogue as well quite often so you get used to it you know um some days are easier than others but um, th those were all fun. I guess sometimes when you went into the demonstration force uh, and it was pouring rain, which it does in Vancouver a lot, mm -hmm. um, and it cold, that, that can be a little trying, but I just never, I also enjoyed it, you know, regardless, you know, you kind of deal with, at the end of the day, we're so fortunate to be working on a cool show and the crew is working their butts off. So I just think I just go with a positive attitude and just make the best of it however you can. I mean, you know, there, there's lots of hot coffee and tea and whatever, and hot shots for your pockets. But um, yeah, I guess physically some things are trying more so probably for like Jason and those guys who are doing a lot of stunts, you That's know, true. Um, you know, and that, that can be difficult. I remember when he was getting just tossed around with a super wraith in that fight. Um, oh yes. With Dan Payne in uh, just, uh, this was Satita. It was Satita and he was just getting hammered, you know, left to right. And I was like, okay, I can string this monologue together, but I can't do that. So, so, you right. know, which is a good thing. Or so would be walking. So, physically demanding you know uh everyone had their parts in the show everyone had different things in the show to do and and sometimes you know uh, ours was to deliver the dialogue and try to be witty and funny and then you know in jason's and joe's oftentimes was the, you know a lot of the action stuff and and they delivered on it all the time so sometimes that can be tricky because there's a lot more semantics to deal with like you know like guns not firing you know all that type of right. thing you know yeah just the weather and all those things for those big stunts were a little more probably difficult and trying for those guys than than uh, for the, you know, the talking guys like me. <laughs> what was it like on Satita being directed by your showrunner, Robert yeah, Cooper? Great. Yeah, great. Funny. I mean, that's the episode where Roddy got the arrow in the butt, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that did not just happen. Great episode. <laughs> great episode. Well, Robert's great. I mean, listen, uh, both Brad and Robert, I mean, they know the story inside and out. Mm. So... I mean, it, 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 it's it's cool. It's exciting. It's always a little heightened too, because you know, you know, one of the bosses is in there, you know, doing it, and and Robert's really great to work out. He's got a very calm demeanor, and he's got a really interesting sense of humor too. And he obviously look at Satita with the arrow on the butt, and they include <laughs> Maximus, but but uh, no, it was very very cool, and it was a great, such a great episode for Jason too. You know, I thought it was a really big breakout episode for him in that show. Teresa MC, uh, Paul, if you could change any of your career choices when you were younger, uh, would would you make any, or do you think everything's led you to where you are now for a reason? Any you regrets? Know, I guess I'm thinking no, in in your no. career choices. No, I've been really fortunate. You know, I really have. I mean, I went to school first and did. Uh, I got a you know a BA and then I did a bachelor of education degree mm. and became a teacher and had that under my belt. Uh, my parents would you know. We're happy about that and yeah. I, I, it's also something i wanted to do as well for me and then i kind of you know i moved into acting a little bit later it made it might be interesting if it got into earlier but at the same time you know um yeah, everything happens for a reason you know it was just it, interesting and uh, i've had i've been very fortunate to play lots of different characters on lots of different shows and 
uh, and as, as you age, it gets just different. I mean, there's different opportunities that arise, you know, um, which is always interesting. I'm always curious to see what, you know, what's going to be around the corner. And I still am very, um, motivated by acting and I, I find, I still find it really interesting for me. You know, I know some people get tired of it and mm. there's a lot of, um, it, it can be a difficult path at times, but, uh, I just don't take any of it personally and just do do my best. I'll try to give him a little piece of poly and walk away and see what happens. But that's all you can do. Yeah, you know, I'm always surprised at the number of, and there isn't a lot of them, but there are a few uh, of actors that I come across who are like, this is not the only thing that I do. You know, I also have a day, a day job when I'm not, you know, auditioning. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah life does go on for a lot of people. Not, not everyone can e d either wants to do this full time or can manage to make it work full time. Yeah, it's tricky. I have lots of friends that work two other jobs. I've been fortunate, you know, over the years that I've kept busy as an actor, but, um, you know, never really haven't done anything else for the past, I don't know, 25 years or so. So making it work. Um, it, it, yeah, making it work. But, you know, and and it's also good. I think people just need to keep busy. And for people that do other things on the side, it keeps them busy and keep keep the money coming in. You know, people have families. They got to pay the bills and do whatever you need to do, you know. Benjamin Province uh, wanted me to bring up Hallmark movies. He's he's so excited when he, when uh, he turns on the channel and you're there. Would you um, uh, uh, do more in the future or have any coming up? Oh sure. Well, I did. I, I just did two over the mm -hmm. holiday. Um, an unexpected Christmas, um, which was a lot of fun, and uh, Christmas in Tahoe. Um, yeah, no, it did very well too. You know, um, they're very popular. It's all, Hey, listen, it's always fun doing Hallmark movies. I enjoy them a lot. Uh, I've done a lot of Hallmark stuff over the years and, uh, of course, yeah, I'd be happy to do more of them. I was on a series called perfect picture mysteries that is a Hallmark series as well. We did, I think four of those and I, I'm hoping they do more of them. We don't, we don't know what's, where that's going at this point in time, but those are the mystery Hallmark series. Ooh, picture um, perfect mysteries. Yeah, with Carlos and Alexa Penavega, who are amazing. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so I did a bunch of those with them, and and you know the Daro and Daro with um, with Tom Cavanaugh. I did a few of those as well, and I don't know if they're coming back or not. But uh, yeah, it's all it's always fun. It's a different it's a different um, it's a different feel. Obviously, it's not sci-fi, but it's it's fun. And the, the, the awesome thing about doing Hallmark Christmas movies is people love them, and you yeah. know it's going to be a good ending. It, yeah. you know it's it, it's it, um it's feel good comfort. chicken comfort. soup comfort food yeah and they're fun to do and they have good stories i thought that one was really quite funny and i was happy to be part of it and i thought the script was really good and i thought the actors all did a, uh, you know a great job great performances you know so it was fun to be part of them. so thanks for watching them hopefully i'll be in some more soon any uh word on your end um i know your ear is to the ground uh just like mine is about murmurs about anything stargate coming up I really have not heard. Okay. I, I haven't, you know, I haven't heard anything. Um, I, I know that the, certainly the desire and want out there, especially in the fan base is large. Right. Um, I, I don't really know beyond that. Uh, I don't know. Okay. You know, it would be nice. I think it'd be really great, for, especially for the fans, if there's a reincarnation of the show in some sort of sort, because I, I think uh, definitely the fan base is there for it and, and hungry for it. But um, I, I, I don't know. Actors are often the last to find out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, we had talked with uh, the uh, uh, cast of Stargate Universe, and a number of them were on the USS Carl Vinson uh, at sea with Brad Wright and Martin Wood at the time of finding out, I think via Twitter, that yeah. Universe had been canceled. It's like, right. you know, some, yeah. sometimes, and it's just, you know, it's like, really? Here is where I find out? Yeah, so. that's unfortunate. I mean, we're lucky we did 100 episodes, you know, I actually won 200, those guys are 40. But, right. You no, know, I mean, that's a lot of episodes when you think about it, you know, um, of any show. So really, really happy. Not just collectibles wanted to know if you've built any Stargate Lego sets. No. I don't think <laughs> Okay. You know, they Lego. There are a series Ask of Hewlett. He's probably good at it. Yeah, Hewlett <laughs> very likely. Yeah, there's a series <laughs> of of uh Lego sets I think by Best Lock. And uh recently I think is it Eagle Moss? Uh that has put out a um uh Daedalus uh BC304 battle cruiser along with some other uh pieces from SG1. So there's more Stargate content coming out there. Yeah. 
What do you think? Uh, I, th- I in terms of like the quality or for the show. The sh- oh, for for another series. Yeah, Mike. Um, I have high hopes. I think that uh, with. Amazon's acquisition of MGM, I think it is it is my opinion that Stargate is floating around in their in their top ten of things to do. My concern, and this goes back and forth on a daily basis depending on my mood, is whether or not they're going to uh, take advantage of the library that they've purchased by adding on to it, or putting the library out and saying, this is for you to watch, but for Stargate, we're going in a completely new direction because we don't want the baggage of 350 episodes of story. Right. Uh, and the the problem with, you know, the Stargate fan base as opposed to Star Trek or Star Wars in particular is that there's only so many active fans. And I hope that there are enough of us to rattle them and say, don't delete what's come before with whatever you're going to do next. But I don't mm-hmm. know if that's the case. And that's right. my concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. You know, there's there's so much good stuff that's come before. I can understand where, you know, they, they would want to uh, uh, reset the template because it gives them a chance to, you know, do whatever they want as opposed to fit inside of a box. Right. But it's yeah. one of those, as a creative person, it's like, where do you go? Where yeah. where would you go if you were if you were handed this and said, I, okay, I, what do you want to do? I, I mean, you, you like I, I think there's something to be said about having a built-in fan base already. So I think you have to honor that. I, I would think, but I, I don't know. You know, I, it, it, that's a it's a real question for uh, the people with the money. I guess <laughs> you know what I mean. That's exactly it's, right. Yeah, you know, I have I have hopes that within a year we're going to to hear something. I mean, I am a fan of that thing up there, first and foremost. Uh, It would break my heart if they wiped the slate clean or did some kind of soft reboot. But I'm I'm really hoping that they'll uh, they'll keep the continuity intact, as well as do something very fresh. and also, I'd love a wrap up of, of Atlantis and Universe in some way with with the new material uh, that allows it, it to bring, do that. Bring, bring some of the old bang that gang back together. I think right? so. I think so. I th- I think that it would legitimize the new content um, by bringing you know a lot of the old the old creatives in, and then by extension, a lot of the old talent. Yeah. Not old like like old, but old like previous. Mature. <laughs> Somewhat. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And I, you know, I think that in, in looking back on Atlantis, there is there is a great symmetry to uh, Beckett's character as well. You have this person who was barely willing to sit down uh, in that chair in Rising, and in in the finale, by God, he's he's bringing that thing to land um, mm. in in San yeah. Francisco Bay. There was there was a a growth for that character that was very satisfying to watch. It had to have been satisfying to play. It was. It was. Like I said before, you know, he's sort of like the cowardly line at times. And then when he when he does get his courage up, I, I think that, uh, yeah, he goes for it. You know what I mean? I think there's something to be said about that. He's like, that's it. I'm doing this. And and, and as an actor and as seeing that arc happen throughout, you know, this five seasons, um, it, it is sort of satisfying for sure. Do you think he went back to Pegasus if Atlantis uh, stayed? What, where do you what do you think he's up to? I think he went back out. Yeah, I think he was back out. I think he wants to be the team back out for sure. There's no way that Atlanta stayed in the Milky Way. I mean, there there probably was something going on there. I know that that was a big part of the of uh, Stargate Extinction or what would have been the first uh, couple of episodes of of season six. But yeah, they have to go back. There's work yeah. to be done. Yeah, I was to say there's work to be done. Yeah, exactly. And I'd love we I'd love to see some still some kind of adaptation for sure. Paul, it has been a pleasure. Uh, having you back you've always been a great supporter of my work and uh this this show and uh you know i i always love uh, having you on and your uh your 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 fondness for the for the fans is is always uh, rock solid and always appreciated well i appreciate them and thank you for all the great questions too by the way that helps a lot and david thanks for facilitating us for everybody you know it's it's fun to get together and chat about old times and and hopefully new times we'll see and uh, 
Yeah, you guys are awesome. I hopefully get a chance to see you at a convention sometime soon. Things are opening up, you know. You would also get a cameo from me. I do cameos now. Yes, that's right. So there was a, there was a request I do, uh, I do, I do where I do, I do it with Beckett, so it's good. <laughs> so cameo Paul McGillian, right? Yeah. Let's have a quick look here. Paul McGillian on cameo. That's legit. I'm gonna post this here. This is so much fun. You know, this oh, yeah. thing has <laughs> just taken off. You know. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun, and the and the fans get a kick out of it, and and for birthdays or Valentine's or whatever, you know, anniversaries and. Um, check out a couple. I, I give you a wee bit of the Scottish flair. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Take, take good care of yourself. We'll talk soon. Paul McGillian, Carson Beckett on Stargate SG-1. Thanks so much for tuning in to uh, Dial the Gate. I'm David Reed. If you want uh, more information on how to set up a cameo with Paul, uh, click the link. I've put it in the uh, description below for this particular episode. I really appreciate you tuning in. Dial the Gate is brought to you every week for free, and we do appreciate you watching. And if you want to support the show further, buy yourself some of our themed swag. We're now offering t-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, and hoodies for all ages, as well as cups and other accessories in a variety of sizes and colors at dialthegate.com. From the merchandise tab, click on a specific design to see what items are being offered. Checkout is fast and easy, and you can use your credit card or PayPal account. Just visit dialthegate.com or straight to dialthegate.com slash merch. And thanks so much for your support. If you like what you've seen uh, in this episode, please consider uh, uh, clicking that like button. It does help uh, the show continues to grow, spreads us to to more Stargate fans that are out there on YouTube who have not uh, discovered the series. I'm always getting notifications. I didn't know this was here. We don't do any real advertising other than through our socials. So it's we, we try to make it the growth as organic as possible. Thanks to my producer, Linda Gategabber Fury, as well as my moderating team, Summer, Tracy, Keith, Jeremy, Reese, and Anthony. And big thanks to Frederick Marku at Concepts Web. He is our web developer for Dial the Gate. Also, a big thanks to Jeremy Heiner, our webmaster who keeps the site up to date week after week. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. We will have the announcement for the next uh, guest for the uh, week of for Saturday the 19th uh, momentarily here in the next uh, few days if we haven't already published it since this is a pre-recorded show thanks so much for tuning in we'll see you on the other side